Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm glad that you joined us today. Our special guest will be Dr. Keith Sterner from Ionia, Michigan. It's bound to be a great show. We're going to talk about cull cows and cull cow quality. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned. Jason Lewis, I work here on Division Ranch, uh, north of Strong City, Kansas. We run 500 head of mama cows. We started using multi men about a year ago. We didn't have any problem with health that year. We didn't have to doctor near as many in that pasture. Just the overall appearance was a lot better. And I liked it so well, we'll start using it on everything. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Folks, this is Dr. Keith Sterner. He's a veterinarian from Ionia, Michigan, and he's recently retired, but you're still not divorced from the veterinary profession, still active doing a few things, um, inventions and, and consulting and that's right. Enjoying it. I really truly am. It's, it's as much fun or more fun now than it was when I had to get up every morning and go stare at the south end of northbound black and white cows. <laughs> well, we're tickled to death to, to have you here and, and thanks for taking the time to, to spend with us. You're entirely welcome. We're going to talk about cull cows and specifically cull dairy cows. Right. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a topic that hits the media. It does, and unfortunately, we on the dairy side of things have uh, not focused about the, the impact that called dairy cows have on the entire image of the beef industry. Because as you know, every dairy cow, when she's done with her career as a dairy cow, gets to see the career counselor at Burger King and has a second career in the beef industry. Absolutely, and, and uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, when you see the, the People have a hard time, a consumer has a hard time differentiating a dairy cow from a beef cow because most of them are depicted as, as dairy, you know, the Holstein breeds. That's right. And so the, to the consumer, it's probably more similar than what it is within our, within our industries. A lot of our dairymen are fond of uh, saying that once the hide's off, they all look the same. Yep. And that's so, true. Yep. And, and so... So when we start to think about cull dairy cows and, and that, what, what percentage of would be a typical culling rate on a dairy? A well-run dairy, uh, if they have a good reproduction program, will have to remove, one of two things has to happen. They remove 33% of their herd a year or they wind up expanding. And both are true in the dairy industry today. Two words summarize the dairy business, fewer farms, larger farms. And so some farms are always looking for additional replacement animals, but those that are staying constant in size will have roughly a third new animals uh, coming into the herd each year. Okay, so if a third new are coming in, that means... Three, a uh, 33% are gonna leave, yep. that's right. And, uh, um, you know, we're about a minute from the break, so I don't really wanna get into um, the reasons yet of calling. I think sure. that would be a great segue into our next segment. But, mm -hmm. but um, you know, do these cull cows, they're, are all of them going to slaughter or do some of them go into expansion herds or most of them going the to? The vast majority go to slaughter, but there are some certainly that get sold for dairy. And there's an opportunity for dairymen who are moving cattle either way as a, as a profit center for that dairy if they're careful about what they do. Well, it's a great topic. It's a timely topic. Glad you're here. We're glad that you're watching. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. After the break, more with Dr. Keith Stern. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. And by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. 
producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normice and LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Welcome back to Doc Talk, folks. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm joined here today by Dr. Keith Sterner. And as you can see, it's Doc Talk on the road. And Dr. Sterner is from Ionia, Michigan, who is a recently retired practitioner, but very engaged with the beef industry. He's been a leader. Uh, in, the, in the dairy industry, in dairy veterinary medicine for the American Association of Bovine Practitioners, and it is my pleasure to have him on the show. Thanks, Dan. And uh, let's talk about some of the, you know, we're talking about cold dairy cows, and, and we talked about, you know, the, the, the animals, the number of animals leaving the farm, but what are some of the reasons? Why, why are people calling these animals? There, there are as many different reasons for calling dairy cows as there are dairy cows out there, but primarily they revolve around the production cycle on the dairy, the fact that there are newer animals that may have better genetics in them that have the potential to produce more milk, and that's where the primary income on a dairy happens to come from. So cows that are at low production is the primary reason for sale of cows. There are a fair number of cattle that are sold around the country because of changes in the industry that are sold for dairy purposes, so they may go to another farm. Then there are certain health reasons uh, such as mastitis, lameness, um, other uh, sicknesses that animals get, so long as they meet certain basic criteria in terms of health standards to be suitable for the food chain. And uh, uh, I assume you know we see reproductive issues in in the on the beef side. We, we I failed to mention infertility is probably the single biggest reason that you know that the low production is there. Okay. So while a cow goes for low production, there may be <laughs> three or four contributing factors that actually make for that low production. And the biggest one is it's been too long since she had a calf and infertility is at the base of that. And that infertility then can be predicated on other things like she was a little lame or she had some other uh, health episode that's way in her past now, but she's infertile today yeah. and she winds up headed to the career counselor. So the, so the stress or the, the, the trouble that we could have seen from an infection or from, from an injury could, could you know, lead this animal to that. Yeah, it's, it's generally long past in her history, but it's a contributor to her low production today, the reason she's leaving the farm. And then when, when we're making these decisions, you know, I think one of the things to get across is, is timely calling. That's exactly right. 
cows that are going to go ahead and leave the dairy present the dairyman with an opportunity to go ahead and make money. We talk about the difference between white fat and yellow fat cows. If they have been through an episode of severe weight loss for any particular reason, their fat tends to be more yellow and therefore her cuts of meat don't have the same market value that a cow who's nice and fat and finished out in, in good thing. The trouble is, is that most dairymen are faced with a conundrum. Their primary business, as I said, is making milk and keeping animals that might have gotten thin for a health reason and then not selling them right away for so they can put another cow in her stall that is able to produce milk and make profit for the dairy is very difficult. Most dairy facilities are fully uh, taxed in terms of animal capacity and that animal capacity it doesn't allow them to keep these animals for that longer period of time. 60 days is the usual length of time that they'll keep these cows that they can actually gain weight. Very good. When we come back from the break, more with Dr. Keith Sterner. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs, whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. We're cow-calf producers from Northeast Colorado. We run about 300 commercial cows and calves and uh, sell them at the sale barn in October. Since we've been given multi-min, our reproduction rate is about 95%, which is pretty good for grassland, and we run bulls, and we do not AI. That means an extra 15 calves at sale time. We've been using the multi-min product for three years. We are really happy with it and recommend it to anybody in this business. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Keith Sterner, who's from Ionia, Michigan, and he's a veterinarian. He's served many leadership capacities with the bovine practitioners. Um, and within the state of Michigan and, and nationally, and it's a pleasure for me to be able to capture him uh, here at BP and, and be able to spend some time with you and, and uh, get you on our, our show. We're talking about uh, cult dairy cows right? and, you know, beef quality assurance, dairy quality assurance, all that. Uh, you know, what are some of the things we need to have in the back of our mind when we're calling these animals? Dan, first of all, thanks for having me on this show, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about something that's uh, front and center in a lot of veterinarians' minds with regard to their producers' decisions to move cattle to market after they're done with their career as a dairy cow. And considerations that dairymen have to have have to do with animals, their culling decision, and when's an appropriate time to go ahead and move an animal to market and it's at a time where she represents the best profit opportunity for the dairyman, hopefully, and those decisions have to be made early on, and that means a complete 
review of records on the animal, not just treatment records to make sure that they send a wholesome, healthy product that's free of any residues, any violative residues of any medications that she might have been on uh, for health reasons, as well as what's her overall condition? Is she actually suitable to be eaten? And most of my really good clients will say, if I wouldn't eat her myself, I wouldn't ship her to market. I mean, and, that's a great motto. Yep. And, and not only that, but that marketing decision is being called into play where dairymen are a lot more sensitive to it than they used to be thanks to these beef quality assurance programs. Um, they're starting to say, hey, I have a role and a responsibility to my markets as well to the entire beef market. And I, that's a refreshing change to see. And, and as a veterinarian, I'm sure that you're involved, you know, they're, they're, you know if, a, if a drug is, is given even in a different, uh, you know, the administration of that drug is done differently than what's on the label, whether it's IV, sub Q, or IM, you know, that changes the, the whole, pharmacokinetics of that drug in that animal. And so, you know, I'm not whole, picking on the dairy industry, no, but we see that. And, and that's been a real problem. I mean, the, the naked truth is the naked truth. Cull dairy cows have been the largest, the one most responsible for violative tissue residues that have been found. And part of that's a combination of how the drugs were used, the routes of treatment or the amounts that they were treated with. And the most common thing is just simple human error because nobody recorded the treatment and didn't pay attention to the calendar in terms of how long the, the, resi the withdrawal time for making that animal residue free happened to be. Just human error. And it's as simple as that pen and that piece of paper. And then, <laughs> as Dr. Griffin said, actually reading it makes a big difference. Yeah, it's important. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll, we'll kind of do a wrap up on cold dairy cows and, and some parting comments. Good. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back in a minute. From Kansas State University, this is Agriculture Today. New data out of several Plains states suggests that the actual growth improvements in commercial cow herds has been very modest in recent years, and a guest speaker at K-State's recent beef conference, Oklahoma State University's Dave Lawman, reads this to mean that more emphasis should be put on efficiency in cow herd production. Those three different data sets actually show very little to no improvement in calf weaning weights in commercial cow-calf operations. So the context there, I think, is operations that operate with low inputs. They don't spend a lot of money on, say, supplement or try to minimize hay feeding and so on. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Baxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and pleased to have joining us today Dr. Keith Sterner, who's from Ionia, Michigan, and he's a bovine practitioner, dairy practitioner, and we've been talking today about cold dairy cows. We sure have. 
and when we talk about cold dairy cows and, and the consumer and the producer and cows and people, where, where are we headed in the future? The, the landscape that dairy producers live in today is vastly different than it was even 10 or 15 years ago. We live in a day and age of instant communications, the internet, everybody's got a cell phone with a camera on it and so forth. So uh, anytime somebody feels wrong, it seems to make uh, both the news via the internet and uh, um, mass media. So most dairymen today are very sensitive to the fact that what they do on their farm can and does impact an entire industry. But I take great solace as a veterinarian with the clients that I've worked with over the years. And the, they, they tell me, Doc, the first thing that I want to do with my livestock is we eat the products that we produce. I feed my kids, I feed my family, and many times employees get shares as part of their compensation for the work with what they eat. And if I wouldn't eat it, I don't expect anybody else to either. And you know, regardless of the fact that dairymen are in a business to run a business so that they can stay in business, they are still stewards of their livestock. And they, they understand the cycle from birth until that animal is sent to slaughter or to another operation. And um, they are salt of the earth people. They believe in the golden rule, do unto others as you have done unto you. And they really practice that day in and day out. And like any profession in the world, there are some who fall outside that <laughs> norm, but the vast majority always try on a daily basis to do the right thing and take great pride in the quality and uh, safety of the products that they produce. And among the decisions that they have to make is knowing the right time for what's best for the animal in terms of her welfare and safety, what's best for them as a business person, and what's best for the consumer and the consuming public. And ultimately, they know that if they do anything to uh, abrogate that trust in the public, that their market is put in jeopardy. Absolutely. And that's a really bad thing for them and their neighbors as well, because uh, to quote a popular TV so show, we're all in it together. Yep. Well, and I think when you said, if we, you know, we aren't going to send something to town that we wouldn't eat ourselves. That's we wouldn't do something on our farm that we're ashamed of, that for anybody to That might be on a YouTube you wanna, on the internet. If you want to watch it, we'll do it. That's right. You exactly. Know? Well, I sure appreciate you being here today. Great Thanks, information Dan. and a great show. Appreciate it. Thanks for all that you do for the bovine practitioners as well. And thank you very much for watching Doc Talk. If you want to know more about what we do on Doc Talk, or if you'd like to see some episodes, you can go to www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. My name's Tim Todd, uh, along with my wife Chris, we own and operate Green Mountain Angus Ranch out of Rygate, Montana. We've been in the Angus business for about 30 years now. We sell about 300, 350 bulls a year. We have a production sale in the fall, November, the third Friday in November, and we have a uh, private treaty sale in the spring. We've been using the multi min product for about seven years now. Uh, we started using it uh, off the recommendation of our embryologist. He suggested that we give our recip cows a shot uh, prior to putting embryos in. Uh, we had a real good uh, conception rate that spring and we've been using the product ever since. Uh, this area of Montana can be a little deficient in copper. That's one of the three main uh, minerals in multi-min. And so with that we brought our copper levels in our cattle up to where they need to be. We've seen an increase of uh, five to six percent in our conception rate on our, in our AI program. You start getting 30 to 40 more AI calves uh, in a year. Uh, we're showing a, a huge return by using the product uh, in, that, in those regards. We give our cows a shot of multi-min 
pre-calving for the immune system of the unborn calf. She will transfer the minerals into the unborn calf through the blood system. When the calf is born, he has a, a high level of mineral in his liver, which will help with his immune system. Uh, in our particular operation, we uh, lease a lot of pasture, so it's real important for these cattle to stay healthy. Uh, we don't get the opportunity to, to check them like we'd like to. Uh, uh, the least sickness, the, the least foot rot we have, the better off we are. So uh, with the use of multi-men, uh, that's two of the big benefits we've seen. Healthier cattle, less maintenance.